and welcome to Sacred Spaces. My name's Michaela Drebeck and today we're in Melbourne's Docklands at NAB's new home, 700 Burke Street. Now we're going to be having a chat with Dorma a little bit later about some of the details of the building, but today we've got Nick Corrales and Simon Pohl from Woods Bagot that's going to tell us a little bit more about just how this building came to be. Welcome guys. Welcome Michaela. So I'm told Nick that you're the genius of the outside of the design of the building, so tell us a little bit about the history about this, how this building came to be. Supposedly, um, yes, we're involved in the architectural positioning of the main building. It was, it was one under competition and there were a number of sites in the Docklands. We're standing at the footsteps of the Docklands precinct. And uh, it, this site was chosen because of the, the peculiarity of the building and its location. We're in between Southern Cross stations and Etihad Stadium. And clearly there's a lot of footfall and foot traffic here. And one of the aspirations for NAB was to engage with the community. So what better site than this one, right at, right at the front door of the, do of the Docklands, to draw people into the building. And one other thing that's quite unique about the building is that it has the street access as well as this elevated access as well. Michaela, that's exactly right. One of the brief components from NAB was to engage with the community. And what better way to do that is to drive a street right through the building in itself and allow the, the public into the interior of the operations of the bank. Now once we inserted the street through it, we then overlaid it with the atrium. So what we got was this volume where you could see both horizontally and vertically into the organisation. So the whole organisation exposed itself to the community and the public. So we think at this moment, um, there's very few buildings in the world that achieve this, that say I'm a bank and the Melbourne community is welcome and this is the way we work. We work in an open collaborative way and we have nothing to hide. So in many ways um, the significance and the cultural poignancy of, of achieving this interface with the community is what makes this building quite remarkable. Yeah and the NIB were very strong in making sure that their philosophy and their values were incorporated both from the outside and the inside as well and you're going to tell us a little bit more about that Simon. Shall do. So I mean, there were four key values that NAB were looking for. One was around authenticity so making sure that it was authentic to the site, hence the triangle, but also the economy, where we're sitting and what the banks really wanted to do with the customer and the community. Second one was around microclimates, which was on a site this big, 75,000 square metres of actual office space. There were different places for people to go, depending on what they needed to do, when they needed to do it in an agile workspace. Um, there was also the fact that it was a highly sustainable building, and that added to the temperature control and the way that the building operated. Um, it was also real-time working, which was an agile workspace where it, it, it verged on the idea of something different and a place to go with the right technology to make sure that you could do your job in real time and there were no delays there. So there was a lot of things that we were actually dealing with and especially around a great site. Now there's eye candy everywhere you look inside the building, so I'm dying to check it out. Can you show us around? Let's go. All right, let's go. <laughs> Well, we're inside this fabulous building now. We've been joined by Greg Noble, who's from Dormat, and will tell us a little bit more about some of the details. But for now, can you tell us where we are, Nick? Kayla, okay, we're now standing inside the public streets through the centre of the building. The public street ends in the village, which is an experiment about community engagement that Simon will talk to you about. It also allows you visibility up to the atrium. The full 14 storeys of the building is now revealed to you at this very moment that you've entered through the front door. And again, we mentioned the triangles that have been incorporated throughout the building. So what's some of the things that you've been involved with here as well, Simon? So this is very much an inside-out proposal that we've done here. So working with a triangle all the way through, um, architecture and interiors, hand in glove, all the way through the process. So picking up the way that the atria works, understanding how the social heart of the building sits within the centre of this atria space and how the triangle really comes up and protects it with great visual connectivity all the way across the space. And this space is very much about people. And so there's, was there 6,000 staff that you said are in here now? 6,000 staff currently working within the building behind us. And they're all working, well, 95% of the people are working flexibly in an agile environment with the right technology. And what I love about this building is there's little nooks and crannies everywhere that really encourage socialisation and, and integration not only within co-workers but also just with, with clients as well and people off the street. That's right and it was about engagement, making sure that the people that, the people that are in this building came from six different buildings and they'd ever worked together
together before. So as a part of the community strategy, it was to bring the people together, making sure they're sharing knowledge at every opportunity, creating those serendipitous moments that they never had before. And a part of that physical and the visual connectivity really starts to join them together in those little nooks and crannies, making sure they can have those water cooler moments around the corridors, etc. And one thing we couldn't do is actually get in and out of the building and enjoy the building without our friends from Dorma. So what are some of the things that you had to work on, Greg? Oh, thank you, Michaela. Thank you for the kind introduction. Um, Dorma has been involved in the project since September 2011, and we're privileged to be working with, with Woods Baggett uh, on the project. Uh, in terms of view of the product on the project, uh, we've been involved in the revolving doors uh, in front of us here, which are incremental in achieving the sustainability and the six-star uh, rating of the building. Um, we've also been involved in the architectural door hardware, uh, some frameless glass fittings, and today we're still servicing the product in the building. Uh, we'll continue to be involved with the building for a very long time. And we'll look at some of those details in a little bit as well, but I know that one of the areas that, we're, that you were quite proud of is the village behind us as well. So what were some of the things that uh, Dorme were involved in with producing that? And look, the village has some very unique uh, frameless glass fittings, Michaela. Uh, we've got a product called Door Motion, which if you're familiar with the sliding drawers at home in your kitchen, they, they close very softly. We have a full sliding door system that can do that manually. And there's another very unique sliding door within this building as well, and that's in the arena. And I know that's something else that collaboratively you're all very proud of. So I'd love to have a closer look at that. Can we have a closer look? Let's go. Great. Definitely. All right, this way? Sure. So Greg, we're in front of the infamous arena now and there's some three premium access solutions behind us as well that I know Dorma's renowned for. So can you talk us through them? Yeah, sure Michaela, thank you. Um, Dorma's all about solution providing and being able to provide product to different types of doors. If you look behind us, we have a, a swinging door on our left, a revolving door in the middle, but the door you may not see is that very, very large panel over here. And it's one of a kind. Absolutely, it's five, minutes, uh, five metres high, seven metres wide, and we actually operate it automatically in, in certain climatic conditions. It weighs nearly two tonne. And we developed that solution in conjunction with Woods Baggett around some very strict design requirements. So we're very proud of the achievement. And what's unique is the fact that there's a big glass sliding door that separates an arena through to the general part of the building as well. So where did the concept for this come from? The concept has come about due to the climatic conditions within the building. We're trying to exclude hot air from the atrium on hot days and vice versa on cool days. Uh, if you look behind you, if we, if we see the cavity behind the door, the whole panel will disappear behind that area under the, the right conditions. That's unbelievable. And the, the other aspect behind us as well, and I, I have to admit, I take revolving doors for granted sometimes, but that's, that's your bread and butter really, isn't it? And Dorma's is responsible for many of the doors around Melbourne. We certainly are. In this building alone, there are nine revolving doors, and if you were to walk through all of them, I think you'd get quite dizzy, Michaela. So. And why would you have a revolving door as opposed to just an opening, closing door or a sliding door? A revolving door is quite unique in that it doesn't allow climate in or out. At any one point in its revolution, uh, the building is sealed, so they're, they're quite unique. They were developed some time ago, but they're very important in maintaining the, the envelope of a building. And especially in Docklands, which is renowned for its uh, windy nature, so you really don't know what the weather is outside when you're inside this building, do you? No, you wouldn't. It really keeps the wind out. <laughs> it certainly does. Simon, we were down at the community level before and now we're on the client level. So can you tell us a little bit about some of the background, some of the features that are incorporated here? Okay, so this is really where NAB receive their customers. Um, and on this level, we've got the client pods behind you over here, which is made from recycled timber, um, a lot of it handmade um, because of the complexity of the space. You'll also see behind us the atria. You'll get a sense of the feeling of the business. There's a lot of movement. There's the great hall behind us as well, where a lot of the um, seminar spaces go on as well. Um, and what you get from this position is the customer comes into the business. We still haven't gone through any security barriers or anything. It's very open, very transparent, and we're now in a space where business gets done. But also the family can come in and sign a loan application or hang out and use the business lounge, for example. And another key feature of the whole building is, we've mentioned it before, is the sustainability. But it's not only in just the way it operates, it's with uh, the features that you've used as well, some of the materials. Yeah. So the materials that we've used, we've used a less is best principle. In other words, question, why do you need it in the building? 
um, when you start to go through some of the typical flaws, you'll see that we've actually taken out a lot of the ceilings. We've only procured 30% of the ceilings in this building because we don't need them. So we've taken that approach. There's a lot of off-form concrete, um, a lot of exposed services, and this is all into the play of authenticity, which was one of NAB's values of the project. And throughout the building, we mentioned it before, but I cannot let it escape again, is there's all these little nooks. Mm. There's all these little coloured areas and little areas that really encourage you to sit and to, and to spend some time and do whatever you want. And I'm, I've got to say, if I was in this building, I'd probably go and hide in a corner and read a book or something like that. But NAB's fine with that. It is, it, and, it, it, and it actually encourages that transparency as well. So you can go and withdraw, watch the world go by, but also you have a sense of, you can work and watch, and people can see that you're there. You've got nothing to hide, and plus, it's better than building building. It's better than building offices and spaces where you're you're enclosed in spaces. So, it's a it's a more open and transparent way to work. Oh, absolutely! And I've never seen a lunchroom like they have before. It's a great space up there. It isn't is. It? It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And if you had to choose one favourite space in here, yep. I know it's a difficult one. If you had to choose at least one or a couple, where would it be? There are some special spaces up on level 14, I think, is probably, that would be my key spaces. We designed it as a space that we would want to work and we would want to hang out and have a coffee. So that would be the space up on oh, level 14. All right, well, let's go check it out then. Sure do. Okay. We're in the area that I was referring to as a lunchroom before, but it's so much more than that, isn't it, Simon? It's not a lunchroom. No, it's the, it's the social heart of the building. I mean, we, we're finding that... It's a little bit different. It is a little bit different, a little more uh, unique than a lunchroom. And, and that was a, a key part of we're seeing buildings now, is that the social context of why people come to the office. When you can work at home, you can work in a cafe, you can work anywhere, you can work in a, on a bus and a train. So why come to an office? And with the, the, the new Agile working idea, um, you want to come here because people are here and you're sharing knowledge. So make great spaces that people actually want to come to. And we've taken the idea of this particular cafe space and we've taken it all the way down through the building on that central triangle to make sure that that social aspect was at the heart of everything that NAB does here. And you've put in some cheeky little design aspects as well, even incorporating your grandmother's backyard. Well, you know, you, you hark back to the things you know and love that make you comfortable. So bringing in some of the, the old recycled brick, um, some of the old pergola style and the, and the way that the vines grow up the spaces was a, was a nice way to make you feel comfortable. And this, this space is a very popular space for NAB. Um, it's used for working, it's used for the lunch time trades, coffees, um, but also for having meetings when people want to get away from their workspace. And there's quite distinct different aspects of all the different buildings that you've both been involved in in Docklands Precinct, but there's also common themes amongst them as well. And, you know, one that stands out is sustainability, but then also, you know, the really practical solutions in terms of dealing with some of the things like a wind factor. Yeah, that's right. Look, we, uh, we at Dorma like to enable better buildings. And we do that through our, our large product portfolio. Um, in terms of door hardware, revolving doors, automatic sliding doors, movable Otherwise known walls. as premium access solutions. Absolutely, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Michaela. Look, we, we look at every doorway and every opening as an opportunity to, to provide a solution to, to our clients, such as uh, Simon here. Now, Greg, I asked Simon before if he had to choose a favourite space around here, what it would be. Do you think you could pick one as well? Sure, Michaela, without doubt, uh, I'd pick the, the garden area out here on, on level 14. I love being outdoors, I like gardening and it relaxes me personally. Uh, so without a doubt, level 14 is, is my space. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for both of you for spending some time with us today and telling us a little bit more about this fabulous building that we're in at 700 Burke Street. Uh, and it's been great to have chatting to you both. Thanks, Michaela. Thank you for the opportunity. My name's Michaela Dreberg. You're watching Sacred Spaces and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.